welcome back. Today's uh, pair of shoes that we were going to work on are a pair of Florsham Imperial. I think they're relatively vintage. I'm not 100% sure. The idea behind the video is to show what to do when you have a pair of shoes that are um, new to you. So, the first thing you want to do, or at least that I suggest you can do, is uh, make sure you disinfect the shoes. I'm using rubbing alcohol, 70%. That's 70% 70, uh, 70 alcohol, 30% water. I would assume it's a agent to use to dilute. This is volume, volume. Alcohol is really good at uh, eliminating any pathogen, whether it's a, whether it's a uh, fungal, which uh, can create problems like uh, at least food. If there's anything bacterial there, even if there is any uh, viral problem, I think alcohol can help you with that. Once you make a good application of the rubbing alcohol, make sure that you remove the excess. There will be some decoloration, as you can see. But then again, uh, these are the insoles, and if they're new to you, uh, you want to make sure that you don't catch anything. While the alcohol is drying, we will proceed to start with the cleaning of the uppers. I want to thank you guys because this video uh, making uh, hobby that I've taken on has shown me how I need to improve my communication skills. I need to slow down my uh, speaking and also that I'm relying a lot of um, 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 and I I'm also relying on the word obviously quite often so I need to change those things. I would not know if I hadn't start, started recording my uh, shoe shining sessions. So in a way, thank you. I'm sure I'll be a better person as a result. It does feel odd when I'm processing the video to listen to my own voice. I have to be honest about that. I want to talk also briefly about the last of these shoes. You can see how it has a very um, square shape. Let me uh, make a reference. See, as you can hear, these, you can see these churches, even though they are rather similar. Um, well, this is a very busy in Ox Oxford, but you can see how that this goes down as opposed to this one that goes straight it looks it reminds me a lot of a uh, Budapester which is a glass that is quite famous for certain shoemakers specifically Vaz from Budapest and also obviously that's from Budapest um, and also Heinrich Winklacker which I think they're German Okay, now at this stage, we will proceed to remove any excess dust particle that can be found on top of the upper. This would be the first step in the cleaning process. Make sure to also get that tone area. As you can see, it is rather dirty. So get it as much as you can. Let's repeat the process with the other shoe.
Now this tongue, because this should be in Oxford, it's complicated to get. Try and do your best. And uh, when we come to the stage of adding pigment, then we will make sure that it evens out because right now it doesn't look even in terms of color. Okay. The next step is gonna be a thorough cleaning of the upper. I think I can reinsert the shoe trees on the stage. It might not be 100% dry, but I do need the shape to remain in order for me to get a proper cleaning. We will use today um, saddle soap. So get your brush clean. I mean wet, sorry. Rub some saddle soap. Make sure it's up. Uh, Foamy, and then proceed to wash the shoe. Make sure to also get the welt area here and make a generous application of saddle soap because there is broken. Try to try to make emphasis in, in both. Uh, perforations so that they are also thoroughly clean. Again, do not neglect the tongue. I know it's tricky, especially when we're talking afterwards. There is not so much, but okay. Try and remove as fast as possible the excess saddle soap you don't want that product sitting on the upper for too long okay there's still some remaining there so I use the brush to try and bring it out and also to remove the excess here from the, from the welts where I just cannot make it with the cloth. Okay, and I think this one is ready. So now we can move to its brother. Again, get your brush wet, remove the excess moisture, get some saddle soap on the brush, and bring out the foam. You can see how it's picking up a lot of pigment, but also dirt. And uh, Tackle this. Again, make sure you get the welts. Make sure you make emphasis on the brogue and the broken perforations, ensuring that the shoe is as clean as possible. Forget the tongue. As much as we can anyway. And let's wipe off the sap soap. In black shoes, this is not too much of an issue because well it's black. But if you were to have a light colored shoe like a chestnut color. I think leaving the saddle soap 
too long over the surface might cause some decoloration and you don't want to have that. Also, you don't want to have that with a medium brown or even a dark brown because it can leave uneven areas of coloration and just that's just not eye appealing. Okay. Again, let's use the brush to remove the excess saddle soap. Make sure you get the both perforations quite clean as much as you can. And just by doing that, let me try and clean here as much as I can. Just by using a little brush and some saddle soap, you can see that the shoes are looking a little bit better. Um, because of this type of situations where you can see that the color is fading away from the edge of the sole, I will use some sandpaper to even out the edges of the sole and make them square again. I don't need it here. As you can see, this area is relatively untouched, but over here, uh, they do need a little refreshing to make, to make it flush. So we don't need to make too much of a effort. The idea is to just to make everything even. So I think this will work. I'll check on the heels. The heels are partially rubber, so there's only a little section here of leather. And I think here you can see a little bulge that doesn't look nice. So I'll try to sand it up and make it even. Small details, I know. Nobody's gonna really notice those things, but if the shoes are yours, you'll know they're there. Since we are messing with them, might as well leave them as presentable as possible. Okay, see, that looks a lot better. Let's check the other one. Looking super nice. Again, the same situation. Seems like on the toe area. Need it to uh, even it out. These shoes will need some TLC later here today. You can see the separation of the heel. And again, there is just an uneven surface here at the edge of the heel. So again, let's sand it off. make it even and I'm using um, I think this is 80 grit sandpaper so it's rather coarse I also have a finer grit just to finish it and then I go in too deep but here the sanding is rather superficial so not better some sanding with those. Okay. 
what I'm trying to do is make it flush and even. That's about it. Okay. Let's do it again to the brushing to remove. That material that might have gotten stuck because I just sanded the shoe. Very chalk. And I think these shoes deserve a little cleaning with a toothpick. Give me a second. Okay, so let's start with the bigger section of the medallion here. Try to remove as much as we can. Oh, there goes the first one. Remember, the idea of the toothpick is to remove as much as you can. Sometimes by just the mechanical effect, it loosens the dirt, so then we will have to come back with a brush to remove the actual particle. The toothpick is physically removing, but it's also softening, if you may, whatever got stuck in there. This is a tad laborious, but it's something that if you are into shoes, you should be enjoying. I was checking through the shoes that I have, and I noticed that I'm missing a Sturdy Broad Oxford, which would be similar to this in terms of the uh, shape being uh, an Oxford, but the, the shoe would not have the perforation here. That's why it's called Sturdy because it's an austere design. Um, there is no perforations, it's poor in that regard, but it does create a very nice looking shoe. So I think I will need to try and find a pair which also opens the possibility to try a different shoemaker. A lot of my shoes are from the same houses makers. I enjoy a lot of Justin Fitzpatrick's product. I also enjoy Vaz. There are certain models of Alan Edmonds that I have gotten, even though the brand is not my particular favorite. Um, they are big here in the US, so you have to also consume domestic. They, they do make nice shoes, don't get me wrong. It's just that not my, prefer my preference in terms of brand. And I think you can buy a lot better quality for a similar amount of money. If you buy uh, firsts, if you go for seconds, that's a different story. Um, I do enjoy also trying different brands. I have different brands. I think the most exotic one would be the made to order boots from Indonesia that I had emailed from Winston Shoes made. They are some rather nice boots and the idea behind those boots were to mimic the patina and the looks and the aesthetics of a pair of, a pair of uh, 
Carlos Santos, Adelaide, which at the moment I'm waiting from the Novo Shoe in Costas um, to deliver the shoes. It's this whole pandemic issue has slowed down the facilities and the production lines. In many industries, shoes is not an exception. Okay, I think because of how noticeable the front broke areas, those are the ones that required more attention. So now, again, let's try and clean as much as we can the brush. Great. Let me get this out of the way. Let me clean this work area. Okay. So we have Partially dehydrated, dehydrated, yes, dehydrated the insoles with rubbing alcohol for disinfection purposes and the uppers with the chemicals or components of the saddle soap. So now it's time to condition the leather. We will use Mobri Delicate Cream, which it's funny that it's called delicate cream. The consistency is similar more to a, to a gel, but it's a very good product. I like it. So make sure to get uh, the insoles wet. You have to cover all of the areas that are leather. These shoes are leather lined, so I will get to the crevices. Do you like vintage products, vintage shoes? I like um, this brand, Florsheim. Florsheim, I don't know how you pronounce it, that's the right pronunciation. But they have very interesting models for vintage shoes. I also have a pair of um, exotic crocodile leather mm, clap shoes, Evan Clap. We'll work on, on them one of these days. But mainly my vintage shoes are from Russia. I like the V cleats. It's a metallic section that goes in here that helps with the um, walking so that you don't go through the heel that passed. Because this is still wet, I'm not gonna insert the tree, the shoe tree, um, right now. So I'm gonna proceed and moisturize the upper with the wet shoe tree, which is it's possible. Make sure to uh, use your other hand for support. That way, you can thoroughly massage the product into the leather. So this is a process you can repeat if you ever buy shoes that are just uh, new to you, but not necessarily new, no, if you know what I'm saying. Which is uh, quite a good way to get hold of quality shoes for several reasons. 
people buy shoes the wrong size and then they try them on, they wear them one or two times, trying to make them work, but then they come to the realization that they're just the wrong size, so you can find a good deal. Or people just want to try something different. They buy something expecting for them to look a certain way, and then when they get them, they realize they're not, that look or that particular style is not working for them, so you get a shoe at a better price. Which, rule of thumb, I would say uh, for a second hand shoe, depending on the amount of wear and tear, 40%. 40 to 60 percent depending on condition and also the brand and also how rarely a particular shoe might be it's an appropriate pricing structure so 40 to 60 percent of the original price would be again depending on condition depending on the brand depending on the model a respectable price to pay oh, sorry for a second hand shoe I think I'll stop the video now, let shoes thoroughly dry, and then we'll carry on. At this stage, um, the shoes have had time to dry, actually uh, quite a lot of time. They got the best of me, so I'm continuing the process a day after. Um, so we'll continue with a little brush. The Mobrite cream is not known for providing too much of a shine after it's been applied. So I think that the best work it does is that moisturizing, not so much at giving an initial shine. step would be then to carry on with the pigmentation. I'm going to add a little color to the shoes and I'm going to use straight black. I will also add a little tint of another color on top of the black. You'll see me do that in a moment. But the initial layer would be will be the black. Uh, in this case I'm going to use uh, Brift H products Japanese brand um, I really like I follow them in their social media accounts and I really like what they've done with uh, the industry related to shoe shining small amounts Will take us a long way now when you apply it make sure that after you make the application you spread it as thin as possible with your uh, fingers or brush or whatever other way you're applying the cream well, this is the time where we can actually get on the tongue area and make sure that uh, we also properly pigment this area which gets neglected sometimes forget about it from time to time okay Been taken care of now the idea of spreading the uh, cream thin one is obviously to uh, make sure that we are using 
just the right amount but it also helps down with the uh, drying of the cream I will also use the cream to pigment these areas of the sole that have lost color because we sanded we sanded them so You could also do this with uh, Edger, which is pretty much a dye, liquid dye most of the time. But um, you can also use um, creams. I guess that there is more than one way to skin the cat. Now, because these shoes have uh, these little broken areas, I will use a little brush to ensure that those areas get also um, some pigment in them. You want the color to be even throughout and yes we just clean them but remember that that is leather so you also have to make sure that those areas get properly treated you don't need really that much i'm also trying to take care of the stitching here, the welt. By the way, I am using the same brush, but I washed it off camera and it's been um, enough time where it has dried. So that's why I'm using it to deliver the wax. If not, I would have to use another one. Okay, I think that this is looking good. We can move to the next one. Black is such an interesting color because even though it sounds simple, um, you can do so much with it and it allows itself to experiment, try, learn a lot. So do not underestimate the simplicity but also the beauty of a black pair of shoes if i were able to choose just one pair of shoe one color a lot of people would go with brown because it seems like they're more um, flexible in terms of what you can use with brown but i would go with a, a black pair of shoes if i had to choose just the one you know Okay. Again, a little bit will take a long way. Currently, we're sitting at um, I think in a channel close to 150 followers which I sincerely want to say thank you for everyone that has subscribed to the channel a lot I would like to hit the 200 mark by the hopefully by the end of the year and then we will do a little something to celebrate uh, pretty much celebrating your patience to deal with my shenanigans <clears throat> at this stage I would also like to do something different I don't know if you've seen it but I want to reuse the laces now the laces they're looking kind of dull so I'll add a little color pigmented cream and uh, Add some coloration to the shoelace, try to make the uh, black stand out a little bit. 
could use a new pair of laces, but in this case, I just want to try this and see. I've done it before and I liked it. I've never done it on camera though. So I'm just going to show that uh, if you're in a pinch, like where you're not able to find the right size of shoelace or the right style, and you already have an existing pair of laces that work, um, they're just looking dull because of the sun or um, any other reason, you can still bring it back with a little cream. And then to protect the soles, we will also, when the moment comes, add some wax to it. Okay. We're done with the cream. Well, we suggest that you give it another little rub to ensure that all the cream has been applied and hopefully it is dry. Yes, you can wait. There's nothing wrong with that. If you so desire, I like to spread it thin so that by the time I am... Um, oh, I completely forgot the tongue on this one. See what I mean by neglecting? Not that you actually want to neglect it, it's just sometimes you forget. Um, where, were, where was I? Uh, oh yes, about the uh, spreading of the cream. I like to spread it thin. Uh, and then you can wait, sure. But because I use just, hopefully, just the right amount, uh, the shoes are relatively dry rather quick. Okay, now we will try and push those pigments as much as we can with the uh, use of a hard brush. Now, to add a little dimension to the shoe, I will also use a little bit of uh, this cognac color, just on specific areas of the shoe where the eye catches most of the time. You can use navy. Uh, in previous videos when I've uh, worked on black shoes, you've seen me use uh, navy, which is also a good color, but you can play with uh, colors. So I'll add a little bit in here this cognac just to give it a, diff a different color uh, the black really um, masks most of the coloration so it's going to be very subtle not even I would say too perceptible to the eye it's just a small amount just to add some different hue different tone to the toe cap and the heel area. Just something fun. Like I said, yes, we have used um, navy, navy cream. Um, I was, I've used also cognac and uh, Hermes Red from Saphir. Just to add a little something okay now it's when the fun begins we will remove any excess cream that might still you know remain on the shoe this is to avoid you um, or the color bleeding into fabrics like jeans or socks or trouser, whatever you're wearing. This also minimizes the amount of transfer of colored creams to brushes, so you don't need to clean your brushes so often. 
can see there is some cream left behind show you the before and after in here too so this is how we start relatively clean it's also a way to measure with the gauge if you're using too much cream because whatever is not absorbed or pushed into the leather is just gonna come off when you uh, rub it with a cloth. See? Now I thought I was using smaller amounts. Uh, but this happens regardless, so don't think that you've done something wrong. See? This is how we start. And then... You know, I would like to play some music in the background, but um, sometimes I do when I'm cleaning the shoes or working on shoes and I'm not recording. But I don't want to get into any issues with um, YouTube and copyrights. And I hope that if you're doing some shoe conditioning or working on some shoes, you're also enjoying maybe your favorite drink, whether it is um, coffee or tea or beer or some spirit. Make this a enjoyable moment. Okay. Well, we begin the process of shining, the actual shining of the shoe. Um, I also washed this uh, brush just when I brushed the small dauber as well, get it off camera. For a lot of people, this is almost the final stage. I would always suggest that you use a small amount of wax on your shoes after you've uh, nourished and conditioned the leather because the wax is going to act as a protective layer so i know the creams have um, some wax in them that's why at least the sapphire palettes and this brief age um, that's why you can bring a little shine on the shoes but i don't think that that's enough so i would always suggest that you use a small layer of wax on your shoes to ensure that uh, you protect them. After all, we're always washing our hands, we're always walking from one point to the other, so there's dust, there's water, all those things that could drop on your leather and uh, that your shoes and cause some potential harm. I will shine these shoes using a neutral color, wax, um, just because I think it's, it's a good experiment to try. Yes, I have black and yes, you can use black, but you can also use neutral. Being black, hey, you could also use a uh, different color wax but I think black's gonna do the trick here remember one or two initial layers should help protect the shoe they'll also help with the shine but it's mainly um, for the protection of the leather bear in mind that you have 
these perforations so try not to apply directly the wax into these areas apply it on this um, smooth areas and then spread it so that there is less accumulation and clogging of the brogues uh, broken perforations that is now when we're working with this stage there is a small and subtle uh, thing that you can do when you're waxing your shoes as you can see I'm using this finger to apply the wax but at this stage because I'm just applying wax uh, for an initial sort of coverage then I'm not doing it but when I get ready to start applying the waxes the layers for the mirror shine I'm gonna use this one to make the application but this one to spread the wax that way that way it gets a little bit warm and um, as it gets warm it melts and it applies evenly uh, and it also spreads it thin you don't want to have a, a too heavy or too thick of a area extend that it's gonna make the mirror shine not look even if you have areas where you have more wax than others so by using one finger to deliver the wax and another one to spread it i have found that it works a little bit better for me now this is just empirical personal experience i'm not saying that you have to do it i'm just saying that that's how i do it so if you ever try it Hit me up in the comments and let me know if, uh, for one, it makes sense, and uh, also if uh, that has worked for you too. This is the longest stage of a mirror shine. The laying down if you may of the shine foundation okay at this stage we will start doing what i was commenting about laying the wax for the mirror shine so try and take notice if i do it constantly applying with one finger spreading it with another By the way, you should also, uh, well, if you live in the States anyway, try to, key, to give these pure polished products a try. Uh, you have no skin in the game. They don't uh, provide free products from you or anything. Everything that you've seen in the channel that I use, um, I purchased out of my own pocket. It's not like I'm trying to give uh, recommendation based on companies or persons uh, <clears throat> donated products or anything like that I just think that they are an interesting company they use natural products uh, derived from orange and citrical fruits and they are made here in the US. That's something that's also important for you just to consider it. And they also are an alternative. I am 
perfectly happy with using uh, boot black or sphere but I always like to know what's out there and try different things just to have alternative tools um, and I think that I, that applies to uh, other aspects there are individuals out there that really enjoy certain brands of shoes and I can appreciate that but I also like to try different brands I do have my favorites um, but I definitely like to have a little bit of uh, everything or most of the makers out there I cannot have a pair from everyone uh, for several reasons but I do like to try just to compare and have a reference in order to have a reference you do have to have a baseline so the baseline should be the company that you prefer and then you should explore other makers and use your favorite brand as a benchmark I'm rambling anyway um, I think that you should do that also for the products that you use on your shoes You think that Sapphire is the gold standard, then that's fine. Just give other companies a try, especially on those products that you have a whole. I'm not saying have two cans of or two tins of black uh, cream, one from Sapphire and one from another company. That's just not practical. But you can have, let's say, brown, and then if you run out of brown from Sophia, then you can try Boot Black, or you can try um, what other brand, Brift, or you can try, I think Burgle is another one, to fill that gap or that hole that you may have in any particular moment, just to try. If you feel like after trying it, it's not for you, then you can always go back to your standard. That's why you have a baseline, so that you have something to compare to. There are limitations to certain brands. You don't have as many color options. That'll be the first one. Uh, sometimes also distribution. If you're not here in the US, and even if you are here in the US, there are certain companies that do have distribution issues. Uh, so those are variables that you need to consider. But if you can, let me just say, Give, it a, give another company a try. I try to use as many products as I can just for you to have an idea about how each product performs when you have a reference. Just the other day in the uh, one of the shoe forums on Reddit, uh, someone was asking about a cleaner which is this one. They were curious about how this product performs and I gave uh, the user my opinion, what I think about the cleaner itself and also what I thought was an appropriate suggestion. Which to be specific, what I said is that I like the cleaner because it's on a solid medium. It's not liquid like the Renomat. So that allows for you to have a little bit more control on the amount that you start um, using. <laughs> yes, you can clean the excess of a cloth, the Renomat, if you use too much or if you apply too much on a cloth before actually cleaning the product. But that's beyond the point. I'm just saying that because it's on a solid medium, semi-solid anyway, because it's kind of creamy, uh, you can control it a little bit better. But it suggests that you should also consider the liquid cleaner, uh, which is a brother of that solid cleaner for Brift, because I have found that they complement each other very well. So from a practical stance, if you want to, say for instance, compare Saphir Renomat versus the cleaner, 
even though they have a similar application because for the cleaner you would have to have both or I would suggest that you have both maybe Renomite is better that's just my opinion I'm not saying that that's the case I'm just saying that that's what I think I do have both I have used both and I think I have a video where I compare them side by side here in the channel so that's the kind of value that I'm trying to add to whoever visits the channel practical experience of things now that I can make the verbal comments because we have migrated to me speaking on these videos then I can share with you before I was just writing everything into, into the area where the description is but it seems people prefer for me to tell what I think instead of typing it which makes sense but sometimes when I was writing the comments I took my time to find the appropriate words to make the description because I was doing it after the fact I cannot do that when I'm recording a video because once I say something I said it and it's out there now that I will take back a word but sometimes there are better ways of saying things you know words that are more accurate or appropriate such a small thing but it does make a difference and if you're not paying attention you might miss it when I do the switch of the fingers because they're so close together and it happens so fast sometimes it's hard to see but it does happen I use one to apply and the other one to spread and you can definitely tell by the difference um, it makes in terms of sound so when I apply it and then when I spread it invite for you to leave in your comments what is your favorite shoe brand why and what color do you prefer your shoes let's try to make a, a little experiment and find out what is among the viewers and among the people that are subscribing to this channel their favorite maker and then we'll give this maker a shout out not that it's gonna make any big difference I suppose but it's always nice to share your opinion So do you mirror shine your shoes all the time or do you just do a basic shine or 
what is your favorite way of wearing your shoes? Personally, I like mirror shines. Um, they are a tad tedious to achieve, but this is what I use uh, for relaxation. And I also have learned to let it go. Uh, I was overly preoccupied at times about maintaining the mirror shine, try not to scratch things, avoid people stepping on me. Got angry with uh, people that did that by accident, obviously. Just let it go. Accidents will happen regardless. It's like it's not like people out out there trying to mess up my shoes. And if they do that by accident, hey, I have an excuse to get back on it. Small layers of wax. A lot of patience. That's the secret. Which other channels do you follow? Whether it is for the shoe shine or for the sounds. Lately, I have, I, I have found uh, cooking channels and, and street food channels that are similar to what I used to do at the beginning, where it's just a natural occurring sound. Really soothing. I enjoy a lot of. Uh, the channels that are uh, showing how street food is made. I've been following a channel that uh, specializes, I would say, in Korean street food. I think his name is something in the lines of Yummy Boy. I like the sizzling and the hustle and the bustle in the background of people. Plus, the uh, food really looks yummy. Now today, I will use this boot black polish water, which do not quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, but I do think it's a combination of water and alcohol uh, due to the smell. I haven't actually checked the MSDS to see what's the actual content. Uh, But yeah, we'll try the polished water. It has a very nice dispenser. See, small dispenser, so minimizes the risk of me overdoing the amount of water that I apply.
like, okay. So what do you think about this hybrid system? I don't want to, I'm using products from pretty much all over the place. I'm not like sticking to one uh, supplier. I'm not using everything Brift or anything Zephyr, anything Boot Black or anything uh, Pure Polish. I'm using a little bit of everyone. Do you think that I should just stick with the one? Do you not care about what I use as long as I get the uh, mirror shine done? I think it makes more sense to move the shoe than it is to move myself when I'm trying to get all the angles. I try to keep it in this area so that it's within the range of the camera. But forgive me, sometimes I do not. I'm recording this in July 2020 and where I live is summer so we're heading we're having very hot days which I like but I hope that wherever you are you're enjoying the current weather it's going around whether it is in an area that has the four seasons or in an area where you just have the dry and wet season Hope you're enjoying the video and I hope you're also enjoying the weather.
Because of the shape of the last, this allows for a very nice area so that we can develop a mirror shine right in the front because it's not slanted downwards, it's almost straight. I think if we achieve the proper mirror shine in that area, it's going to really make the shoe stand out. I know it has literally nothing to do with mirror shine, but if you are also into podcast, that is to uh, listen to podcasts, there is a podcast about shoes. I call I think it's called the Stitch Down. The last time I reviewed it, I think they have two or three episodes. Should be something that you want to give it a listen see if they if um, it adds value to you if uh, you're into the hobby of uh, owning shoes if you enjoy shoes at all if you want to learn about shoes um, the episode that i partially listened i haven't finished it we're talking about indonesian shoemakers which is an area in the world that perhaps it's not the first area that you think about shoes when uh, they mention Indonesia. But because they were a colony, I think, from Britain, it makes sense that a lot of British people brought their traditions and trades with them. And among those trades, uh, most likely it was the uh, shoemaking. I think that's how it goes. So, yeah, if you enjoy podcasts look for look for that it's called a stitch down there's also another podcast channel that I would recommend that I do enjoy a lot it's called revisionist history it's by a Canadian book writer his name is Malcolm Gladwell and he invites you to see things Or more that um, what they seem to be. He has several books. I think two or three are bestsellers. I have a couple of them. But there's something about an audio as a medium that also makes it interesting. Granted, when you're reading a book, it's your imagination trying to fill in the gaps, which is good. But when you hear the author of a book speaking, it, 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 I don't know, it's easier to understand his perspective or the idea he wants to uh, promote or the topic he wants to discuss. It makes it more personal, I think. So yes, if you're into podcast, you should give Malcolm Gladwell Revisionist History a try.
good in there. This is one of the areas that you just have to be patient. much as I would like to say oh yeah that's you can achieve it real fast um, no it takes a little time I have done in the past attempts to get a shine under time I think I did it with a boot black artist palette product line and I use my hands to spread the wax and also to shine the shoes as opposed to using a brush maybe check it out i think i'll leave a description a link to the a link to a video in the description sorry By the way, if I have time, I've never done this before, but if I have time, today that is, after working on these shoes, I'll work on uh, this pair of uh, GNG. Hopefully I'll have time. They're due for a shine. Uh, and I wore them the first time without mirror shining them because I was wet excited I suppose so, now you know which shoe will come after this hopefully see I used too much wax even though I was trying to be as careful as possible and it has happened only well mainly with this uh, pure polish that you can see accumulations here um, you can see it here so when I use the brush for the last step hopefully I'll remove the excess of um, wax like I said it, had, it, it has only happened with uh, pure polished products. I'm not saying that it's because of the product itself. Uh, I think it's a user sort of error, if it is an error. I'm not blaming the brand. I'm just making the observation. For whatever reason, the second shoe that I wore 
work on. It seems to me that it always develops the mirror shine a little bit faster. So I started with the right shoe, right for me, left for you. But now that I'm working on his brother, it seems like it's getting there faster. I don't know if it's just my perception or if it's a thing. But it seems to me like the mirror shine develops a little bit faster on the second shoe. Could be completely wrong. I have to um, check the timestamp and see if that's a thing. But at least in, ter in terms of perception, that is what I feel. It's like when you travel to a, a new place for the first time, the way on the way to the place, it seems it takes forever. On the way back, not so much. Any subse sub subsequent uh, visit that you do, because everything is a little bit more familiar, it seems to go faster. Again, I might be just rambling, but that's how I feel. In the near future, I would like to experiment making my own, uh, not creams, but waxes. I think I can, I think that I, that I can actually do. Be a combination of beeswax with, I think it's a plant wax that gives you the high shine also, it helps, um, I can't remember the name, Carnuba wax. I think it's a plant. Uh, so I might give it a try and see if I can develop my own wax. Just to see, you know. Some curious person, I suppose. I do this to remove the excess moisture. Just in case. There is a thing called the world shoe shine championship i'd like to get a little bit more acquainted with the organizers and see if they have amateur category i'd like to give it a try and see how i fare against other amateur shoe shiners out there All in all, it would be a nice experience, I suppose. Get to know other people that are into this. Anyway, this shoe shine competition, or well, before this whole global situation, um, I think it's done in England. And you have an allotted amount of time, which I think the last video that I saw was something around 20 minutes to develop a mirror shine. They give, you, they give every participant the same shoe and then they also allow you to choose whatever products you want to use so they have the same starting point the same shoe same color um and the same amount of time and they do the shine in parallel so you have all the shoe shiners in the same area going in at the same time <clears throat> i 
the only question that I have is how do the deter how is the uh, winner chosen because I would think it is just an arbitrary decision about what Shiner uh, did the best with the products they had now it's arbitrary because there's I think that there is no specific guideline it's, it's more the opinion of the judges so that would be something that could be improved maybe find a, a way to establish a standard I have tried that before and I still do every now and then I have my shining glossometer which comes from another industry I think they use it on uh, car automotive industries uh, before they give an okay to a car paint they measure how much it shines with this gloss meter which I think it's a way to measure So there was a standard way to determine what the overall objective would be aside from obviously the mirror shine um, more people could get into it I'm not saying that the judge's opinion is not valid I'm just saying that it's a little bit harder for someone that is not too familiar with the industry or the hobby to say which of a mirror shine is best especially at that level when you have people that do that for a living they're professionals and the minor details are the ones that make a difference so if, if there was to be a standard that everyone could follow and understand it would benefit the competition a lot better I think it's just my opinion anyway I do have to admit that uh, I think um, the winners have been uh, Japanese shoe shiners that um, well they use all sorts of products the competition is sponsored by Zafir so if you want to play the devil's advocate there um, I cannot say that Zafir leans towards those shoe shiners that are more prone to mention them on the social media or things of that nature but like I said having a standard would also eliminate those um, situations on which you could argue oh yes there is something else in there suppose nobody wants to lose
look good in there. Ooh, starting to get hot. Great sweating. I think we are expecting a temperature of uh, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I've lost my track of metrics. I think it's minus 32 divided by 1.8. So that would be 90 minus 32, that's 60. 38, 39, 40 degrees Celsius. Anyway, the overall uh, concept is that's hot. Have not the best day to wear a Henley green car. Too late for that though. See, that's why I like to keep my videos quiet because I'm always rambling in my head. Now I'm rambling and being outspoken about it. I have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Happy mistake. <laughs>
Okay. So. Well, at this long stage, I think that the shoes are uh, almost ready. I'll just give it a final pass with the cloth and uh, uh, water. No wax at this stage because they have already been waxed. So. This is 
it's just to make the last two rye if you may for the cloth stage trying to even out the shines in the areas where wax was applied but have, but on which we haven't uh, actually tried to polish it yet this pair I have had so much trouble finishing this video um, a lot of things that showed up last minute which has uh, delayed the process okay we'll proceed to reinsert the laces but I did comment it that if you're in a pinch um, you don't have a replacement for laces then you can always cream them and wax them to bring them back to a stage closer to what they originally had The lacing of your shoes is also a matter of personal preference, how you want to lace them. So just keep in mind, sometimes you go parallel, sometimes you go over under. It's a matter of, uh, like I just said, personal preference. And also how you tighten up. As you can see, if you start with a shoe that is um, relatively upkept <clears throat> when you buy second hand, you can actually get a good deal. Just make sure to, uh, first of all, buy from a reputable source. There are a lot of people out there trying to scam. Also make sure that you check for crevices and uh, insole condition. That tells you a lot of uh, the wear of the shoe. Uh, overall stitching, the condition of the vamp, uh, the condition of the heel, which is gonna tell you also if the shoes have been worn a lot. And just ask the seller. Uh, I tend to believe that there's more good people out there, so I'm pretty sure if um, the seller has a reputable track on eBay or whatever you're buying, um, they they're not gonna want to, they won't want to risk it. Okay, now as you can see, there has been a little bit of accumulation of waxes in here um, I don't know if you can actually tell so we'll reuse the, the last stage of the brush to try and obviously improve the shine but also to remove those uh, deposits of wax to the best of my ability anyway 
like I commented before, this has happened to me with the yeah, Pure Polish. I'm not saying it's the brand, most likely it's a yeah, user, in this case myself, which uh, did not spread the wax thoroughly. just like that we went from dirty and uh, not so very attractive to a pair of uh, mirror shine shoes which are ready to start their second life I hope the video was of your liking I also hope that you enjoy the whole process and uh, if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. Subscribe, share with your friends, leave your comments and thoughts. Thank you very much. You have a good rest of your day.